Over my years of trading in stocks and options, I've read hundreds or possibly even thousands of books about what it takes to be a long-term successful trader. In this video, I share five of my favorite quotes from five world-renowned traders and authors that will help you to be a more consistently profitable stock and option trader. On these shelves are some of my favorite books. They include the rare books that I've read multiple times. I'll put the link to all five of these books down in the description below. And the last book, I think it just might surprise you. One of my favorite trading books of all time is Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. In the introduction to that book, Jack writes that in conducting interviews with the most successful traders of all time, there were several things that he became convinced of. The second one really stood out to me when I read it. Here I quote his book. The markets are not random because they are based on human behavior, and human behavior, especially mass behavior, is not random. It never has been and probably never will be. I too strongly believe in this quote. Although the markets, they do erratic things from time to time, the markets are not random. If you learn how to predict human behavior, you've gone a long way for predicting the most likely outcome in any market situation. Yes, at times things will just happen that surprise us, such as an unexpected war, a terrorist attack, fraud in a company, or a lawsuit within a company that we're trading in. But honestly, those surprises, we really should expect them. And those surprises should be calculated into your potential return on every decision you make. You see, humans, they tend to react the same way to the same situations. They tend to do the same things over and over again. Once you understand human behavior, you'll come a long way for being a successful stock and option trader. His third and fourth point here are ones that I also strongly agree with. His third one reads, there is no holy grail or grand secret to the markets but there are many patterns that can lead to profits. And his fourth one is, there are a million ways to make money in the markets. The irony is that they are all very difficult to find. In my opinion, once a trader has learned how to control their emotions, has educated themselves on how the markets work, these two points are the next step that they must master to become a successful stock and option trader. One of the awesome things about the markets is that there are so many ways you can make money in them. However, the most successful traders, they have found not the market's holy grail or secret, but they found their own personal holy grail or secret. What I mean is that they have found a way to trade and make money in the markets that matches their personality. In my case, it took years to figure out a trading style that was not only profitable over the long run, but that also matched my personality. I know you too will find your holy grail or your trading secret. The next quote that I want to share with you is from one of my favorite investors of all time, Warren Buffett. In the book, The Essays of Warren Buffett, Lessons for Corporate America, one of my favorite quotes goes as follows. A flash crash or some other extreme market fluctuation can't hurt an investor any more than an erratic and mouthy neighbor can hurt my farm investment. Indeed, tumbling markets can be helpful to the true investor if he has cash available when prices get far out of line with values. A climate of fear is your friend when investing. A euphoric world is your enemy. For many traders, the reality is that his last sentence there in the red box is actually the complete opposite for them. A climate of fear is their enemy and a climate of euphoria is viewed as their friend. Now I'll be honest with you here. This vital trading lesson took me years to master. Even to this day, it's one that on occasion, I just have to make sure I keep it in check. A successful trader must master control of their emotions. Now that control is a lot easier for me, and I'll tell you from personal experience, it does get easier with time and the more you trade. But it's one that takes a tremendous amount of discipline. And for me, it took making fearful and euphoric decisions in the wrong situation to realize just how bad those decisions ultimately were. Trading decisions based on fear and euphoria are very seldom good decisions. Decisions based on logic and reason, now those are decisions that can make you a very wealthy person. I thought that it was only fair that if I was going to share a quote from Warren Buffett, that I also share one from his equally intelligent and well-renowned partner, Charlie Munger. I admire both these men for their wisdom, and I deeply appreciate how they've freely shared their wisdom with all of us. But let me tell you, Charlie Munger's book entitled Charlie's Almanac is not the easiest one to read. I mean, it's an excellent book, don't get me wrong, but it's really heavy and it's really big if you're reading the hardback version like I was. Back when I was reading it, it was actually physically painful to hold it because it was so heavy. But it's what's inside that kept me reading. Here's one of my favorite quotes that I remember, especially when I'm waiting on a market or stock setup to play out. Charlie said, there are worse situations than drowning in cash and sitting, sitting, sitting. I remember when I wasn't awash in cash and I don't want to go back. I am nowhere near as wealthy as Charlie Munger. However, I too remember what it was like to be broke. I was broke when I first started out in my first business, 
and after the Great Recession in 2008, 9, and 10. And like Charlie, I never want to go back there. As a trader, sometimes one of the hardest things to do is to do nothing at all. But sometimes, as Charlie is saying here, doing nothing is the wisest thing that you can do. One of the nice things about being not just a stock, but also an option trader, is that we don't have to wait as long as stock traders might have to. We can sell cash secure put options at a strike price that's below where the market's currently trading at and at a price that we'd like to buy the stock at. That's one reason why I tend to build positions slowly. I sell a cash secure put option. If the market keeps going the way I want it to, then I'll sell another one. And I'll continue to do that until we've achieved a full position size in the company. But there are times, including this year, we had extra cash just sitting there, not doing anything for us, not even earning any kind of interest because the rates were so low. And I was okay with it because it was the right decision. I also get all the extra margin that we have available to us just sitting there. And I choose not to deploy it most of the time. However, in certain situations, when I believe there's an extreme opportunity, I'd be willing to use some of that margin or leverage to take advantage of market situations. But I'll tell you, that would have to be a special situation. Until then, we have extra cash, we have all the extra margin and buying power, just sitting, 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 waiting for an opportunity. Charles' quote ties quite nicely and with one of the most entertaining reads I've ever read when it comes to stock and option trading. And the lessons I learned were very entertaining as well. The book is called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Towards the back of the book, I ran across these last four sentences in chapter 20. This book is written by the famous stock manipulator and trader Jesse Livermore. He had been talking about stock manipulation and how his trading would change when he realized that his buying and selling was no longer manipulating the market. Now, us small stock and option traders, we're not able to manipulate the market. We don't have enough money. However, what he said next is a point that I'll never forget because it applies to each one of us, no matter how large or small our account may be. The four sentences go like this. When the stock you are manipulating doesn't act as it should, quit. Don't argue with the tape. Do not seek to lure the profit back. Quit while the quitting is good and cheap. She might be thinking, Randy, if we can't manipulate a stock or an option price, how does this apply to us? As I mentioned in my last quote from Charlie Munger, as you can see here with Google, we tend to enter our stock and option position slowly. For example, if our full position side is three option contracts, if the charts are looking favorable for us, then we might sell one cash secured put option today. We'll then reassess the position again tomorrow. If it's still looking good, then we'll add another cash secure put option to the position. However, if the position is going against us, then as Jesse said, we don't argue with the tape of the market. We don't press the issue and try and force profit into our account. We quit while the quitting is good, before we take on a full position size and have a larger problem that we must deal with. Many times I see traders try to buy their way out of a bad position by adding to it when they should just stop. Bad positions and trades, they happen to all of us. It's how you deal with those bad positions and trades that will determine whether you'll be a long-term successful stock and option trader or one that goes broke. Incidentally, even a famous trader like Jesse Livermore, he went broke multiple times. So this is a nice reminder that just because a trader is very experienced and knows the rules, it doesn't always mean that they will obey the rules. As traders, we must know the rules. We must also have the discipline to stick to those rules. This book is entertaining and a great read if you're looking for a book based on the real life of a world famous trader. By the way, if you want to be a more profitable stock and option trader, please do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. And if you're enjoying this type of video or finding benefit in it, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. The last quote or story I want to share with you is from one of my favorite books that was written by an author that probably 100% of you are familiar with. In his book, Retire Young, Retire Rich, in chapter 17, which is entitled The Leverage of Paper Assets, Robert Kiyosaki shares a real life story of how he sold some naked put options. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that we make a lot of money every month by doing that exact same thing. But I wanted to share this quote with you about selling put options because when I read it many years ago, it really hit home to me. Under the subheading, why it does not take money to make money, he quotes his rich dad saying, the less financially intelligent you are, the more money it takes to make a little money. If you're financially intelligent, it doesn't take any money to make a lot of money. He then wrote, the following example further illustrates this point and also illustrates the value of having a strong and rich financial vocabulary. Robert then goes on to share the real life story of how he sold 10 naked put option contracts in the company and was paid $5 per share or $5,000 for those options. He mentions that he didn't have to watch the stock or watch the market. He was free to go about doing whatever he wanted to do. He got that $5,000 up front and it took him less than five minutes to make it. 
In his own words, he said, I sold nothing and made $5,000 in five minutes. What he meant by that is that he sold something that he did not own and something that did not exist until he decided that it existed. In so doing, he pocketed $5,000. In essence, he made $5,000 out of thin air. A few weeks later, his broker called him back and said that the naked put options that they had all expired worthless, so the whole $5,000 was his to keep. This story that Robert shared is exactly what we do every day, what we teach you to do on this channel. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades, similar to the one I just mentioned, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Robert Kiyosaki mentioned making $5,000 by selling naked put options. If you'd like to see potentially how much an option can make or how much we made last month by selling put and covered call options, check out the video at the link above and the description below entitled, I made the option wheel strategy a cash flow machine, August cash flow. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.